Most of the goalies I work with have an issue with the RVH and the issue is typically that it just doesn't feel good. <laughs> so uh, today I have a solution. I'm going to give you three ways to feel better in your RVH. So for today's video, we got a special treat. We've got Team Goalie Training Pro out in full force. We've got Jimmy Pareda, uh, who's our newest assistant. Our, he's the rookie on the team. We got the one and only Kevin Beach, who is the veteran of the team. Uh, so Kevin's also a goalie coach, so he's going to be commenting on some of the technical stuff. Jimmy's going to be walking us through, showing us, you know, Demo, he's going to be our demo goalie basically uh, and what we're going to do is talk about some issues that you have on the ice with Kevin and Jimmy and then we're going to head to the gym and we're going to go over some exercises that you can do off the ice that'll help improve each and every one of those elements. Sounds like fun. So we've got a special treat today. We've got Kevin Beach who uh, has been on Team Goalie Training Pro for feels like forever probably feels like longer to you yeah <laughs> yeah uh, but he's also been a pro goalie and is a goalie coach with pro goaltending so uh, we're gonna get his technical expertise a little bit today to help fill in some of the gaps and then we've got Jimmy Pareda uh, who is a SPHL ECHL AHL up-and-comer so he's uh he's the rookie on team goalie training pro so it probably feels like even longer <laughs> that you've been with us um so what we're going to chat about today is the rvh so there's three kind of things that that i hear complaints about one is just getting into and out of the rvh and a lot of times too that's you know adult goalies who've been away from the game for 10 years and they've come back and this is a whole new world to them. Uh, so getting into and out of the RVH. The other one is the fact that your knee and ankle feel like they're going to explode. Uh, and then the third one is, okay, once I'm in it, how do I get out of it? Or if I need to bump off the post to come out to make a save. So today we'll go over some of the technical things that you see on the ice, what you feel when you're on the ice, and then we'll head back to the goalie training lab and go over some off ice exercises to help improve each and every one of those. So let's start with with uh, just getting into and out of it. Um, Jimmy, do you, have any, do you have any issues or feels trying to get into and out of the RVH? Uh, like you said, it's, it really is um, kind of an awkward position on the body that it's, your body's not used to. So it's kind of something that you really have to take the time to learn and improve off ice as well. Yeah. Cap, what do you see? Yeah, I'm going to touch uh, mostly for the beginners watching this and, uh, you know, for the goalies that haven't played goalie in, in 30 years and trying to get into it. The first thing I would say is always try and tuck inside, you know, your leg inside the, the post. That's kind of the beginner spot. You see a lot of the NHL guys are going skate, skate blade on post, but it's where you're, as you mentioned, your knee and ankle feel like they're going to, you know, rip off your body. So I would say start with uh, tucking that leg inside, kind of the, the Tuka Ras mode, then work up from there. Yeah, awesome. Um, do you want to just, can we kind of go through that a little bit and talk about even just like for me, like I have trouble just finding my post and hit, you know, or even hitting that pad inside post. Sometimes it's like, okay, well now my, like my knee is inside the post, you know, do you have any, yeah. So if we were working out, what would you, where would you start? Well, we can show the, the three options first here, Jimmy. So Jimmy, what do you use for, for instance, what is your preference? I go toe bridge. Toe bridge. Yeah. Okay. So the three options, we can show the three options. Yeah. First one would be tucking inside. So we'll be trying to get that shin uh, just kind of above where the, uh, the toe bridge breaks, you know, kind of in that seam. That way you kind of have, you do have a seal here. Okay. So that would be the beginner option and the easiest on your knee and ankle. However, the disadvantage is it is harder to get out of that. So if you are in that, you can kind of kick off your, your shin on place to the middle. But a lot of times, if you are going to get up, you will have to get that skate blade into the ice to be able to get back out. Yeah. But the, the advantage is it's a good starting spot and it's the easiest to get a seal down your whole length of the body and on the post. Yeah, like, so, yeah, for me, like, even if I dink it up and I'm way deep in the net, I still have a seal on the post. Yes, correct. Yeah. The next one, Jimmy, as you said, you prefer is toe bridge. Okay, so that's actually the gap between the the toe of your skate and the bottom of your pad. 
Okay. Yeah. Now, it also makes a difference how you do up your pads. Okay. So, if you have a really tight pad to your skate with with how you tie up your laces, and there might not be that gap. So that's one. As you get more experience, you kind of play around with your actually your toe bridge and how tight your laces are. Now, now when Jimmy's in that, you're able to kick off that as well. So if a play into the middle, okay, he's able to now push off. Uh, a big advantage is there is now a very tight seal, okay? There is no, there's no space there, okay? One of the disadvantages I find in this one is it can be hard to hit that spot. So that's one that takes a lot of repetition to kind of get used to hitting that spot. And then are you able to get out of that as well? Back to your feet? Yeah. Okay, so if Jimmy's gonna get back to his feet, So if he's just gonna stand up, okay, a key thing he's using right now is his, his right skate blade is in the ice, okay? So he has an anchor. I find uh, definitely a thing, even, it's not just a beginner thing, but a lot of goalies, they lose that anchor on that opposite leg, which gives you control. One, if someone's gonna drive the net, okay? That's what's gonna keep you not yeah. getting pushed off. And two, that's what's gonna allow you to get up, it's gonna allow you to bump out, okay? That's what's gonna control all your movements on this post. Jimmy, are you gonna do an example of pushing off the post though? Like up to the middle? Uh, getting up or staying, staying down? Yeah, so pushing up and, and getting up. So this is one of the more advanced plays, okay? So this is definitely if something, if you're just beginning with the RVH, I would not start with this, but he has that, his toe bridge into the post there, okay? Again, he has his anchor, so his weight is into that post, okay? And he's gonna use leverage and push actually off and up out of that RVH. So again, that takes something like, Jimmy, you're training every day off the ice? Yeah. Yeah, so if you're just uh, on your couch uh, watching. Turning pro goalie, uh, Jimmy Parita. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing Maria's training, so <laughs> it's pretty, looks pretty easy for you. Yeah. Pretty it's fluent. Ridiculously okay. Easy. Yeah, but if yeah. you're sitting on your couch right now watching this, uh, this is not something I'd go and try right now without training. Yeah. Uh, first time on the ice all summer too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah not bad. Not bad. <laughs> the third option, okay, uh, skate blade on post. Okay. Uh, this was a popular one when RVH first came in. Um, I find more guys are getting away away from it just because there is a gap. Okay, in between the posts and the skate. Some goalies get creative with maybe trying to fit their, their glove in there to try and seal that up, but the bottom line is there, there are gonna be gaps. And, and it's, sorry, I'm gonna yeah, jump go in, but it's also like, it's that much more distance, you know, from, from the post. So now to get your shoulders and to get this corner, it's that much more torque on your knee, hip, ankle, and just more distance you have to cover, right? Yeah, this is definitely the one where uh, it feels like your your knee and ankle are gonna blow up, blow by, off at any point. By far the most uncomfortable one. Oh yeah. By far. And now with skates, the way they're making skates, they're making them higher, so there's actually more gap, yeah. which which makes that harder to make that seal. How are the advantages of skate blade on posts? Number one, it's probably the easiest to hit. Yeah. So when you're in the crease and trying to get back to the post in the RVH, that's probably the easiest to hit. Okay, and it's probably one of the easiest to push off of and back into the middle of the ice, but obviously you have to weigh the advantages and disadvantages and find what's kind of right for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that was awesome. You should, should, you should get a raise. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was good. Oh, yeah. So now I'm interested to know what part of the RVH is hardest for you. Is it getting into and out of it? Is it the fact that your knee and ankle feel like they're going to explode? Or is it what we're going to talk about next, which is bumping off the post to come out to make a save? Drop a comment below. Let me know what part is hardest for you. Or maybe there's something else altogether that you find more challenging. Drop it in the comments and let's get to how to bump off the post. So I Can think- we, uh, mm -hmm. Touch on one more thing that yeah. I find is more important, is important. A big thing that goalies maybe not, don't think of is the angle that you're in your RVH. So sometimes goalies can get tucked inside that goal line. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you actually get tucked inside the goal line, so see how Jimmy's back leg is actually tucked inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, that means if any, a lot of times you use an RVH when there's a tack from behind the goal line, okay? 
So if he gets tucked inside, okay, the player doesn't have to come out very far to have an angle on that net. Okay, so that's that's one that's not good. The other one is if he's he's very far out, okay. I've seen goalies where they're they're trying to work on that bump into the middle, okay? If you have that far of an angle, you're not gonna have any chance to make that bump or or kind of push up back on the push up to your feet. Yeah. So that angle you kinda wanna be just just in front of that goal line. Uh, I'd say maybe half half a foot. Um, Jimmy, where do you kinda what uh, kind of spot do you pick? I kinda pick here, right around like forty five. So Okay. So if on your goal line it would be zero. Yep. And then here would be ninety. I try to I try to get my leg, my pad angle right around that forty five. I think that's the easiest that I can cover. Yep. And also Perfect. So yeah, for Jimmy, it's it's 45. For me, it would be a little lower, but any anywhere in there, you don't want to be too low. You don't want to be too high on that angle. Yeah, that's beauty. So let's uh, yeah, let's head back to the lab and go over some off ice drills we can do because not everybody has unlimited access to the ice. So we'll go through some off ice drills that we can do that's going to help you feel more comfortable getting into and getting out of maybe make your knee and ankle want to explode a little less and help you get the strength you need to bump off. Yeah. Beauty. So we talked about how part of it's just learning that pattern. It's such an awkward pattern that we want to give our body a chance to sort of figure it out, not at high speed. So we just have, Jimmy has a super band at his hips and it's a pretty strong one. It's like an inch and a half super band so that it's sort of helping to pull him out and it's helping to control him in. So when Jimmy comes in and steps into his RVH and he controls himself down, he can get that support. And then coming out, he doesn't have to kind of jerk himself out. The band's going to help pull him out so he can come in. His body can learn how to do that pattern. You can come out nice and slowly. And we usually start with like a, a three second in, three second out tempo, or maybe even a little bit longer to start with. We aren't doing this for speed. We're doing this nice and slowly so we can learn that pattern. Just show one more time. Yeah, and then come out. And so paying attention to where should your hands be? Where should you be looking? How does that feel when you do it? Uh, it feels really good, especially um, the added assistance to come out of it and just a lot less wear and tear on the hips. Yeah, totally. This is a funny way to work on that tibial external rotation we talked about and, and we don't have a lot of tibial external rotation so like you can't twist your foot around that way but we want to maximize what we do have and so we can use this pails and rails technique from FRC to work on it. So I just, I just have a dumbbell here and it's wedged against the bench. You just need something that isn't going to move and then you can see I position myself in as much tibial external rotation as I have. So I'm trying to get this much rotation as I have. And then I'm just going to start off by holding that. Holding that for 30 seconds, getting a little stretch in there. But then what I'm going to do is push my foot, push my forefoot into this dumbbell that isn't going to move at all. So I'm building that tension. I'm building that tension. I'm trying to rotate this way as I go. I'm going to do that for 15 seconds building the tension. But then what I'm going to do when I finish there is I'm going to try to actively lift off that dumbbell without moving my knee. So my knee has to stay stationary. So now I'm using my muscles to actively externally rotate at my tibia. And I'm really going as hard as I can. It kind of looks silly because I'm not doing anything but I'm making the crazy face. But I'm trying to get as much range as I can. And then for the, so that's another 15 seconds. Then I'm going to relax, but I'm going to come and take up that creep with the dumbbell again to help hold that new range of motion that I've opened up. And I'll hold that for 30 seconds. I'm not pushing or pulling now. I'm just taking up that slack and feeling the stretch. One of the other things we talked about on the ice was how hard it is to bump off that post and part of it is that we never ever train our muscles in those positions and, and 
they're at the extreme internal rotation. Uh, it's a very awkward position. So this is an RVH bump off. So we have a glider here, a glider under Kenny's knee. Um, and you can do it without this glider under the knee, but I think it, it sort of helps keep you in position a little better. And then it's just trying to stay stable in the torso. A glide out and come back. Glide out, come back up. So it feels, it kind of feels, that's good, you can stop. It feels the same awkward that you feel on the ice. And so the feedback, this is kind of a new exercise that we've just had in the routine for the last probably three or four months. But the thing that everyone feels is like, oh yeah, like almost right away you feel better coming off that post because your muscles are getting a chance to learn, okay, what's the pattern? How do I do that? How can I be strong there? So we were, we were chatting too about if we're coming, if we're covering to our skates or if we're just trying to bump out into our butterfly. So when we are in that half kneeling position, it's more like you're in a true RVH and you're pushing to come out to your skates. But if we just need to come out to, to make a butterfly save, then we're gonna have the other knee down and we're gonna be pushing same kind of pattern off that outside leg. Trying to really hold that wide flare as you go, not let that pad tuck in behind you. So there are your three ways to get a better RVH or to just feel better getting into and out of the RVH and using it in a game situation. If you got any value from this video whatsoever, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that now. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell so you find out about videos before anyone else. Otherwise, I will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel.